Meet Mahati, an aging mother, wise beyond her years. But she sits at the bottom of the pile, an old woman surrounded by young fertile queens. They live in a monkey paradise where food is always free and always abundant. But they're envied in their lush garden home. And a sudden attack changes everything. Forced to flee, Mahati's troops seeks refuge on the streets. They're out of their element, hungry and afraid. Can Mahati's experience save them? They must learn to fend for themselves if they're to fight to reclaim their home. of the dry season hangs heavy over the ancient city of Jodhpur. The city lies on the edge of the tar desert, so heat is no stranger to its residents. But it's been six months since the last rains. Despite the punishing conditions, one species thrives here. They are gray langurs, also called Hanuman Langurs, after the Hindu monkey god. And this is an unusually large family. Hanuman Langur troops are typically about 40 strong, but this one numbers more than 100. Their intricate society is bound together in a strict social hierarchy that governs everything from who gets to breed to who gets the best food. Sitting at the very top of the pile is the king, Kumar. But the clock is ticking for Kumar. Alpha males rarely rule a Langer family for longer than three years. To hold on to his throne for as long as possible, he needs to keep the real power brokers happy. The females. More precisely, the young fertile females. As soon as they're mature enough to reproduce, at about three years old, they join Kumar at the top of the hierarchy as his queens. They and their children are the best fed and most pampered members of the family. And they frequently bully those of lower rank. As females grow older and less fertile, they slip down the social ladder. Near the very bottom is Mahati. And her three-week-old daughter, Padma. At 19 years old, Mahati is reaching the end of her reproductive life. Padma is her 15th baby and might be her last. Although Mahati is a very experienced mother, being one of the oldest females means she's now last in line for food. But for her and Padma, this isn't too much of a hardship because they live in a monkey paradise. 
Jodhpur's Temple Gardens. Hanuman langurs are found throughout the Indian subcontinent in a wide range of habitats from mountains to rainforests and deserts. They also thrive among the urban jungle. 2,000 are thought to live in Jodhpur, the second largest city in the state of Rajasthan. Decades earlier, one group moved from their wild home into the temple gardens of the ancient Maharaja capital. Since moving into the temple gardens, the Langers have developed a remarkable relationship with another primate. Humans. Hindu devotees associate the Langers with the monkey god Hanuman. The Langers' black hands, feet, and faces call to mind the burns that Hanuman is said to have suffered in battle. The worshippers show their devotion by giving gifts. In recent years, they've started to bring the monkeys all the food they can eat. It's allowed this troop to grow and prosper. In the past, the troop ventured beyond the garden walls to find their own sustenance. But today, there is no need. Everything is served on a plate. The monkeys in Kumar's troop have never had to face the stress of surviving without these free handouts. But for Kumar, Despite this daily bounty, life isn't as simple as it might seem. His kingdom is under constant threat. A rival group made up of a dozen bachelor males looks down on him from the surrounding city, eyeing up his prime real estate and his females. They are young pariahs, ousted by the alphas of their own families before they reached sexual maturity. Joining together for security, they now have the strength of numbers to challenge Kumar for his rich territory in the gardens. At 15 years old, Kumar has ruled over the gardens for almost a year, but he may now be past his prime. The bachelors are full of energy and have nothing to lose. If they took over, they'd kill all of Kumar's babies, Padma included. It would bring the females back into estrus and increase the chance of fathering offspring of their own. So Kumar must always be on his guard. At the other end of the social ladder, Mahati has her own struggles. Being on the bottom rung means she's first in line for bullying. Today, one of the young queens wants to babysit. Motherhood doesn't seem to come naturally to young female langurs, and kidnapping another's baby is a common way to practice. She sets her sights on baby Padma. And what the queen wants, the queen takes. In the rules of Langer society, babies are shared among the females. There's nothing low-ranking Mahati can do about it. But this is a risky game. 
Inexperienced females are known to accidentally injure and sometimes even kill young babies. She seems loving enough, but things get out of hand quickly. Padma is at serious risk of being dropped. a break for it. But Mahati isn't there. Padma is lost. At three weeks old, Padma is still totally dependent on her mother for milk and security she won't last more than a few hours on her own in the 110 degree baking sun. But rescue is at hand. Mahati has been keeping a watchful eye after all. Padma is lucky to have such an experienced and attentive mother. Sitting at the bottom of the social hierarchy, they must both tolerate this kind of harassment every day. But Mahati's a tough cookie. She's old enough to remember a time when the troop still had to forage for itself. Back then, Mahati learned vital survival skills from her mother, such as how to find her own food. Under normal conditions, her 19 years of experience would place her higher on the social scale. But with so much easy food on hand, Mahati's knowledge now counts for very little. Fertility is valued far more, so she must put up with the bullying. But at least she and her baby are well fed. Beyond the walls of the city, many other animals benefit from the fruits of human generosity. Out there lies the Great Tar Desert. A brief monsoon season renders it habitable. But it has now been six months since the last rain fell, and the heat and drought are intensifying. Overhead, a flock of migrating cranes searches for sustenance. And they know where to come. These are Damoiselle cranes. They've spent the summer on the Mongolian steppes and are now at the end of an epic 2,000-mile migration to overwinter here in the Tar Desert. The villagers of Kichon welcome them with open arms. Every morning from August to March, they spread almost 1,500 pounds of grain across a protected enclosure. It's time for breakfast. Cranes are wary creatures. They start by circling overhead, waiting for one brave crane to take the first plunge.
gradually, confidence builds. And the flock descends en masse. Organized chaos. More than 6,000 birds come to feed here every day. But they all get their fill. It's a tradition that the villagers cherish. They believe it's their grain that brings the cranes to winter here each year. In places like Kichon, religious compassion for all living things helps some lucky animals survive even the harshest climate. In the temple gardens, the abundance of donated food sets Kumar's family apart from any other troop of langurs. Their high-energy diet has led to a baby boom. Compared to their counterparts living in the forest or desert, females here have twice as many young and regularly give birth to twins. Something that's almost unheard of elsewhere. Mahadi had her first baby when she was three years old and has given birth almost every year since. The troop's easy life leaves a lot of time for the youngsters to play. Three-week-old Padma is realizing there's a whole world around her to explore. But Mahadi never lets her stray too far. All mothers can spot an overtired toddler. There's not much else to do in the midday heat. The rest of the troop follows suit without a worry in the world. But while they sleep, others are on the move. The gang of a dozen bachelors has been waiting for days for the perfect opportunity. They're closing in. Attracted by Kumar's prime territory and large harem of females. Crossing the boundary road that surrounds the gardens, they enter Kumar's realm. They've come to challenge him. If the bachelors defeat Kumar, they won't just claim his females, they will also kill his offspring. Kumar hears them coming. Attack calls. The troop is caught napping. 
the females panic and snatch up their infants. Kumar confronts the invaders. But he's on his own. And against 12 attackers, he's completely outnumbered. He needs to get out of there. But he doesn't flee alone. Most of the females follow him with their infants in tow, including Mahati and Padma. If they stay with the invading bachelors, they risk their infants being killed. So they'll abandon the precious temple gardens and venture across the boundary road into the unknown. This isn't the cozy world that Kumar's troop is used to. They're now in uncharted territory. Stressed and scared, Kumar holds his tail low. He is a shadow of his former self. And the queens aren't faring much better. Many of the troop's younger members have never ventured outside the temple gardens before. It's an alien environment. There's nowhere safe to rest. And worst of all, there's no daily handout of free food. The troop has gotten used to a life of privilege. They've never had to find sustenance for themselves out here in the city. Seek safety high on the rooftops. Mahati nurses Padma to comfort her. If she's to stay healthy and keep her milk flowing, she can't afford to skip meals. In the gardens, Mahati was last in line for food, but out here, her age and experience might just play to her advantage. When she was younger, she lived outside the gardens. She ran the streets with her mother and learned how to survive. With the rest of the troop bewildered and out of their element, Mahati takes the lead. Surprisingly, Kumar and the others follow. She guides them to the hills above the city and the gardens, from where they can look down on their idyllic home, just a few hundred yards away. The temple gardens have new kings. The bachelors might have chased Kumar away, but they're all young and inexperienced. They haven't yet worked out how to take control of the remains of his troop. All the females with infants managed to escape. So the bachelors must compete with each other for access to the small group that remains. Fights break out. 
they crank up their macho displays to prove themselves to their peers. They need to establish a leader. They must also develop the social skills they'll need to keep their human benefactors on side. But they are delinquents, reprobates, and downright thugs. They've never learned manners. They're just bullies. Kumar's troop watches from the hills above. Mahati leads them to the safety of the trees in which to spend the night. But the branches provide little comfort for the hungry temple troop, who don't know where to find food on the city streets. It's surely only a matter of time before they figure it out. This is Jaipur, the largest city in Rajasthan. Here, another species of monkey has made itself very much at home on the streets. Rhesus macaques have chosen to leave the peace and quiet of nature for this mayhem. And they've established a very urban daily routine. Every morning, they commute through the city, just like the people. Except their route is a little less conventional. They're constantly on the lookout for any opportunity to feed. A window is an open invitation. they have a much more fruitful destination in mind. The market. Food is everywhere. And there's only one way to get it. It's daylight robbery. Brains and bravery are key to outwitting the humans on their own turf. And these rhesus macaques have become experts at city living. They might not have the free handouts of Jodhpur's langurs in the temple gardens, but they're doing almost as well just by helping themselves. In Jodhpur, Kumar's troop has been forced to flee the comforts of temple gardens. They've been roaming the city for three days, feeding on what few scraps they can scavenge. Their search for food has led them to some ruins at the edge of the city.
they're exhausted and starving. Even worse, since they left the gardens, they've had very little to drink. This could be fatal for the youngest babies, whose mothers need to drink every day to produce a constant supply of milk. They cling to the walls for shade. But they won't survive long among the barren ruins. Kumar and the young females are out of their depth. But old Mahadi is no stranger to adversity. Before the food handouts became routine, Mahadi learned how to survive from her mother. Everything from where to find food and water to where it's safe to sleep. Her knowledge of the world outside the gardens now gives her a huge advantage. So once again, she takes the lead. Here, on the fringe of the city, trees and shrubs still remain. And there is food to be had, if, like Mahadi, you know where to look for it. She spots an opportunity her younger peers have missed. Most langers know they can feed on the shoots and leaves of bohemia trees. The young queens with their pampered temple garden upbringing never learned this from their mothers. But Hanuman langers are adaptable and smart, and they can learn new tricks, even as adults. They just have to copy Mahati. This is the first proper meal they've had in days. But Mahati hasn't come here only for the leaves. She knows there's a river here. This water is a lifeline. Just in time for the dehydrated females and their babies. But even in this oasis, right now, at the height of the dry season, there's not enough food to support this troop for long. To survive, they need to get back to the gardens. And that means they need to fight. Kumar now takes the lead. Mahati is next in line, with Padma in tow. And the rest of the females follow behind. They head back down the hill and toward the garden walls below. But as they enter the temple grounds, they're stopped in their tracks. A pack of feral dogs. They roam the city streets scavenging on rubbish. But 
they've spotted the baby langurs, a much more enticing meal. They'd make quick work of a youngster like Padma and could injure or even kill an adult like Kumar. The troop needs to cross the bridge to reach the gardens. Kumar bravely confronts the dogs. It's a diversion, and the rest of the troop crosses safely. The troop makes it to the edge of the gardens. Mahati and Padma are safe. But others haven't fared so well. While running to avoid the dogs, one of the youngest mothers dropped her baby. It's alive but barely hanging on. The female Langer tries her best to revive her injured baby. Her grooming provides little comfort as it fights for its life. The dogs spot the opportunity and close in. But Langer's maternal instincts are very strong, even after death. She'll keep him with her as long as she can. But there's no time to grieve. The troop needs to press on. The bachelors are comfortably settled in the temple gardens, now enjoying the high life. Lazing away the afternoon sun, or trying to curry favor by grooming their peers. They are blissfully unaware of the trouble barreling towards them. Kumar's troop treads silently. They've grown smarter in exile. Back on home turf, Kumar has regained his confidence. Mahadi leaves Padma behind with trusted babysitters. And follows Kumar toward the bachelors. Other females also take their positions. They have the enemy in their sights.
with the bachelors oblivious. Kumar launches the attack. This time, he's not alone. Mahadi and the other females are on the front line with him. The bachelors are in complete disarray. The troop expels them one by one. As the losers limp away, Kumar makes his claim as King of the Gardens once more. As ever, there is a feast awaiting them. This time, Mahadi can help herself first. Kumar and the troop will face many more challenges for their monkey paradise. But thanks to Mahadi's street smarts and courage, they have grown in confidence since their urban adventure and are now prepared for anything life throws at them. At only a few weeks old, Padma has learned an invaluable lesson in how to find food when the going gets tough. She can take her first steps toward independence, knowing how to survive both on the mean streets and in monkey paradise.